Eva Architects is a London-based architecture and design studio founded by Benny Allen that works on a broad range of projects from cultural, public, housing to retail. With thoughtful and hands-on approach in, to design uh, and making, the studio has won BD Young Architects of the Year in 2021 and is looking to continue putting creativity to practice in delivering innovative solutions to complex situations. Benny Allen is here with us today to chat on the topic of open-ended architecture and encouraging social engagement. So looking forward to hearing your thoughts and thanks so much for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's our pleasure. Well, will you tell us first about you and also your studio? Um, I guess I can start a little bit with my background. So I was born and brought up in Spain. And I think that for me is uh, one of the things that influences me in terms of ideas about materialities. Um, I've uh, lived in the UK for many years now. I am British. And I guess what's interesting about my approach is often taking influences from different places. Um, I mean, it, this is this goes for everyone. We all have different experiences in life and those things often influence what you end up doing. And the combination of growing up in Spain, having experiences of living in, in China, uh, visiting Japan many times, all of them sort of lead to um, an idea about, I guess, making architecture of a certain type and quality, which I feel relates very strongly to the idea of open-ended architecture, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So what is uh, your design philosophy, if you have any? <laughs> um, I always find this a really interesting question because really we're a very young studio. We're gonna be celebrating five years this year and it feels a little bit premature to be talking about a design philosophy but I would say that a lot of what we do is about finding the interesting parts of the project no matter what it is and I strongly believe that every project you do should be one of the best that you deliver and try and make everything as special as it can be. Um, we've worked with very very small budgets and uh, that's led to a way of working, which is about trying to find interesting uses of materials, trying to push projects through other means uh, where sometimes you might not have budget to do something um, very large. You can often do something at a small scale that delivers the ambition of that project. And that can come through um, finding a way of using texture on a wall to bring interest into a space or um, using a particular tile and playing with the layout of that tile, which will then give something quite special, makes the project feel almost crafted. Um, so it's not necessarily a design philosophy, but it's a way of working, which is about doing more with less. And that carries through with a lot of the projects that we've done from the very start. Um, one of the things I will say is that any chance we do get to be able to make and be involved in the construction of the project, we do, uh, and we're trying to do that more. Um, at the very start, that was a big way of the way that we got a lot of our projects is that we committed uh, to, to our clients and said, you know, we'll help to build this as well. And that uh, allowed us to keep a lot of the control with the design, but also give us agency, allowed us to learn through the process of making, which I feel it was uh, probably the most rewarding part of that process. And um, ult ultimately allowed us to also do a lot of work in a very short space of time. Mm, that's awesome. So in accordance to today's topic, uh, what intrigues you about open-ended architecture? So for me, open-ended architecture is about allowing a freedom for the users to be able to do um, lots of things. And that the, what I'm trying to say by that is we all have such um, diverse and interesting lives. We do so many things that I feel spaces need to allow for those things to happen. And also I, I like the idea that as a as an architect, 
you don't necessarily impose one way that a space should work, but allow for a multitude of different things to happen. So the idea of open-ended architecture is um, to give opportunities for various activities to happen in a space or a place. Um, I think in addition to that, the way that we live nowadays, especially in the last couple of years is we've been spending more time at home. So I feel the idea of open-ended architecture means that those spaces can change to accommodate uh, things like working from home, um, using your home as a gym, um, using a home as a place to have a party, you know, all these things that need to accommodate uh, the changing lives that we all live. Right. And so if just now we look within, um, but if we zoom out a little bit, what does this flexibility mean also in larger scopes, such as in social, um, cultural, or environmental aspect? Mm -hmm. This is such a broad and difficult question, but I guess a lot of the work that we do, um, or at least I feel we should be doing, is socially driven. And that often could be about a group, but it could also be about putting the individual at the center of that process. Um, in the context of the, the macro level, flexibility needs to allow for the different activities and um, habits that, that we have as a collective. And every culture, every community has, has different ways of, of living and moving around uh, cities. So um, as a sort of idea about designing spaces for social activities, it's similar in that you want to be able to accommodate for all these different uh, types of users. Um, I think it's also important to consider that to design flexibility um, at a sort of larger level, uh, in terms of communities, in terms of uh, public spaces, you also want to create places that feel safe, um, feel safe to sit in, feel safe to move around in, um, for me, architecture needs to accommodate all of that and create beautiful places that everyone can enjoy. Um, I think on an environmental level, flexibility is a little bit more difficult because we want to be very considered about how you make buildings because you want them to last. Um, having said that, we do work a lot with temporary projects and I think the way that we conceive these projects is to think about uses of materials that um, can then lead on to other things. So for example, timber is great because you can um, source the timber sustain sustainably. You can then um, disassemble a project and then use that material for something else. Um, we've just done a construction skills school on the Olympic Park, which we hope that will happen. So it's been designed and made in a way that uh, at the end of the life of this building, uh, we can take that timber and use it for other objects uh, in the park. So I think it's really important when you think about flexibility that it also relates very strongly to an idea about how you make architecture. Um, there, there are buildings now that aren't gonna last 50 years. So what do you do with all the materials after that building has to be demolished? Uh, and I think it's a really interesting aspect about making buildings that we're trying to look at. Um, ideas about prefabrication allow you to do a lot of things off site and the way that's made then also lends itself to be uh, disassembled and used for other things. So I think there's a lot of interesting ideas that we can talk about when it relates to this idea of flexibility and open-ended architecture um, at those different levels, like you mentioned. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's how like architecture or design can balance the dynamic need um, of society that's always changing, right? Um, so will you share with us one of your projects um, that has successfully demonstrated uh, this idea, maybe? Sure. Um, I guess there's a couple of projects. The first one that comes to mind is the preschool nursery that we designed in Manchester. Um, it's 
actually quite a small project, but for us, it was by far the biggest and most adventurous uh, one we were working on at the time. Uh, we worked with uh, the client carefully and their brief was they needed to double the size of the building. And the only way really to do it was to build a building on top of an existing structure. That existing structure had been built in the 1870s. It was part of the largest children's hospital in Manchester. And uh, the building had been extended over a number of years, uh, never really um, respecting the original architecture. So the two sides of the building that faced the street were actually quite modest, but very beautiful, had some really lovely brick detailing. And for us, that was really important to try and retain. But because of the way that it had been built, we could only really support the building from the perimeter structure. So that really dictated the shape of the building. And in terms of what we did uh, as this modern extension was to build um, a structure entirely in timber clad in these tiles made from large panels that we stained in different colors of red. And that red was supposed to relate to the brick banding that went around the building. But in terms of this idea of open-ended architecture, it's really about the spatial plan. Um, instead of making a series of rooms and then having sort of partitions between them, we actually made one very, very large teaching space, which was broken down as a series of rooms simply by staggering the space internally. At the same time, we wanted to make use of the, the tall pitch of the roof so that it would rise with the shape of the, the steep um, roof itself. And what that did was it created a really large volume within the space that as a child would make the room feel quite enormous. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of also adding into that flexibility, we had very large windows where we built these big niches that the children could climb into and play, which plays with this idea of um, offering spaces for them to discover, which gives them that flexibility um, in the preschool room. And there are other little kind of ideas that we tried to include, uh, which is a, a lot about how it, it relates a lot to the way that we design. Um, we feel that architecture can be about lots and lots of ideas together that as a whole creates a really, you know, interesting and um, experiential space to encounter. So things like in the, the children's bathroom, there was only one window, but it was a very, very high level. So no one could look in, but you've got this really um, beautiful, almost monastic light. Um, and it also happened to be the tallest room in the space uh, in, in, the, in the building, but it was very, very narrow. So it had this really quite interesting 3D dimension. And then in some of the ancillary spaces, we did things like pushing the window right up against the wall, which um, seems a little bit unnatural, but I'd seen this idea in, in Ronchamp in the building by Le Corbusier. And it's the way that the light washes the wall, which actually then makes the space feel much brighter. Um, so those kind of moments, of, I'd say generosity felt really interesting and, and adds to this idea of creating a flexible building. It's very, very nice. <laughs> so in today's era where everything is connected, um, how do you see the profession of an architect adapt to the environment? I think the most pressing thing that we need to do is find ways to build uh, more sustainably and to lower our carbon footprint. And that's, um, I don't think, as easy as it sounds. Um, and I think it needs to come from a sort of higher level. I think uh, suppliers and manufacturers need to find and develop uh, materials in ways that uh, don't use as, you know, as, as much carbon in, in the production of those buildings. Um, I'd love to say that I knew the answer and we're trying to do things um, at, a, at a small scale. Um, but I feel it's, it's a challenge, especially as a small young practice when you're working on projects and clients have really big ambitions. And a lot of them also want to reduce their environmental impact. But I feel in the UK, especially that comes at a price. Um, if you want to source uh good quality materials that are more sustainable um they are much more expensive than anything else 
Um, a lot of the materials that are imported into the UK um, all come from overseas and they come in bulk, so they're much cheaper. So naturally, they are much cheaper and it's what everyone wants to use. So um, one of the things that we're trying to do is in small ways, trying to introduce sustainable materials into the way that we line spaces. So finding ways of actually visually connecting that idea about sustainability with the way that we line a room or we create something really special within it so that it, people can really read it if you use a sustainable material in, say, an insulation, it's something that goes into the making of the building, but you don't see it. I think it's quite nice to also build that narrative into the story of the building and how it's made. For example, we've been uh, looking at recycled paper as a material that we've been using in furniture. And that has been really interesting. It brings its own challenges, um, but it's a really interesting story. It's um, thinking about the life cycle of the material that material can then be recycled into something else at the end of its life, if it needs to be. So there are lots of um, things that we're trying to do in small ways. Um, I think the idea of how architecture can adapt is, um, is quite difficult because it has to happen at such, at, at so many different levels. And uh, like I say, I, I would love to know, I'd love to be able to send you the answer, but it's, um, it's, it's quite challenging. The number one issue with a lot of the materials that we have is in the, the actual the pr production. So for example, when you use concrete, the cement, the production of the cement is actually one of the biggest pollutants uh, in the process. Mm -hmm. So that happens way before the material actually comes to site. So it's about thinking um, about the process of production of making those materials that can then make them uh, more sustainable and hopefully more adaptable in the future as well. Because as I said, you know, some buildings aren't gonna be lasting as long as they, they used to. So what do you do with all the materials in that building later on? Right, yeah. No, thank you so much for highlighting today how like as designers should stay flexible with not only how our design is used by the users, but also how it can impact the environment, social needs. Um, but also staying flexible in the process and the process of making because there are other issues that we need to also think about um, in long term, such as sustainability. Also, how can our design be um, having positive impact uh, not only to the users immediately, but also on larger scale? Can I just add one quick point? Um, I talked just about sustainability and materials, but I think in relation to open-ended architecture and how that can adapt as well to changing needs. I think the, the other pressing thing is that buildings need to be um, adaptable. They, they need to be able to change to our, our changing requirements. Um, one of the most um, important things in cities right now that we need to address is housing. So how can housing adapt over time to the changing requirements of a family. So if a couple move into a house, are they able to adapt the space to be able to create more bedrooms so that they don't need to move? And I think that for me is also an interesting aspect that architects need to address is how buildings can over time change, um, change spatially, change in terms of uh, the requirements of what a family might need and also um, think about maybe how spaces can be shared between families or communities. Um, I think there are lots of interesting models that have been developed uh, in Europe, um, which are looking at ways that um, spaces don't need to necessarily have uh, a, a specific program and they can be shared. So the se a central space can be a kitchen, it can be a living room, it can be the dining room. Um, and for me, that's this idea of like what flexibility is and how that can work in the design of, of spaces. Um, so as, as well as sustainability and materials that I was talking about, I think um, architects need to adapt to this idea that buildings need to do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also if anything is that um, our job as designers doesn't only stop at one point, uh, we need to like follow through with what the building's going through. So 
if there's like a need a change in needs or like it needs to adapt in the future so like we need to also think about again adapt with it also <laughs> totally yeah thank you so much for sharing today um hope to connect again with you soon thank you